You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. The big ballers. The ball <laughs> family. Good morning, guys. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. LaVar, heard... LiAngelo, and LaMelo. That's right. We, we came to bat for you guys a couple of times. I don't know if you heard. Yes. Charlemagne gave a... Good looking. Couple of people donkey today. Yes. Yeah, I, I never understand the whole uh, the whole flack that Laval gets for being a, a brother who raised three black men to do the right thing. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Well, you only gonna get that from them haters like that gridlock. That's what I call it. Yeah, <laughs> gridlock because everything stopped on it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like anytime somebody goes against the grain, people always are critical. Like when LeBron came in and he had his management team with him, right. people had issues with that. Yeah, they're going to have issues with that if that guy ain't behind him. And you know who I'm talking about, that guy. They looking for him, but he ain't there. You know, you know, Levar, I, I always <laughs> wanted to ask you. It's always interesting because they always say, like, Charlamagne, who the people you want to interview? And I would never have an answer until I see it on the paper. I'm like, oh, the ball's coming today. I say, I, I got questions to Levar. Like, right. do you think if you were white, you think the perception of you would be the same? Heck no. Right now, they they don't they, they scared of me because I'm uncontrollable. Mm. You can't control one of us, you in trouble. Because mm. now our vision is, is is wide open. We've been doing the same thing everybody else been having a vision doing. But we just different. It's not conventional, so people it don't It ain't conventional, it. Right. no. Right. Like, no, even doing no. a Facebook show, Ball in the Family, and I have to say... Watching that show, I think, gives everybody a better understanding of the whole family dynamic. Just seeing like how supportive and how much everybody loves each other, and mm -hmm. how much fun you guys have at the same time. You're working, but y'all also are like really have a good time together. You have your own brothers at security. Everything's in the family. Right. The, the reason this show is is so good is because it's genuine. Mm -hmm. One thing you don't have to do is you have to write up these props for it to be exciting for you guys to watch us. Right. So when people see us in a different light. Instead of me screaming and talking how good we are and all this, they seeing us being caring and having fun, which is not normal because they, they waiting for me to have a mistress on the side or me <laughs> throw a drink on my brother or somebody and mm -hmm. say, man, but we don't <laughs> smoke a drink, so it's all good. Mm -hmm. And they waiting for something to go wrong, but it ain't because we a tight-knit group. Well, the recent thing you did is is you took both your kids out of school and, and signed them overseas. Yes. Lamelo was in high school. Leangelo, you was at UCLA. Yeah. How like, what, a game that? or two? Yeah. Not even a game. I didn't play a real game. Wow. So how how hard was that? Like when when you came to think about doing taking them and, and signing them overseas? Hey, well, see, a lot of people go overseas for different reasons. That's why uh, a, a lot of folks on the outside is thinking like, man, they're not gonna do good over there. The mm -hmm. team ain't gonna like them. Wrong, because mm -hmm. everybody who go overseas, they go over there to make a living, go over there to make some money. Right. My now, boys ain't going over there to make no living on no money. They going over there for the passion of the game. They want to play. Mm -hmm. They want to. They want to play with some competition. That's what they going over there for. It's a different meaning. You don't go over there all cocky trying. You just want to play, man. Now, how about you guys going to to Lithuania? It ain't L.A. It ain't sunny. It ain't home. You know. And Envy just learned how to pronounce it. Yeah, I morning. sure did. But it's, <laughs> how how was it going? How do y'all feel that it's gonna be going to another? Lamelo don't world? look happy already. He's like, man, <laughs> I'm fine. I feel like it's gonna be cool because um. <laughs> like like he said, we just want to play, really. So I wasn't really worried about where it would be at. Mm -hmm. Lithuania or anywhere is cool with me. And what about now, you? Same as him. Just probably adapt to, like, the culture. And even the language. Cause the yeah, language it's it's going to be different, but it's not going to be like – I don't think it's going to be, like, hard like that. Still <laughs> playing basketball. It's just mm -hmm. in a different place. Now, now for you, LiAngelo, was this a strategic move or was it an emotional move based off what happened with UCLA? What you mean? Was it a strategic? Let me ask LeBar. Ms. LeBar, was it a strategic move or, an, move, or, this or an emotional move based off well, what happened well, at UCLA? It's, it's definitely not an emotional move because my boys are not like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I ain't even going to say it's a strategic move. It's a move that we made that nobody had control of but us. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's stuck on, oh, UCLA is so good. Don't pass up this opportunity. UCLA ain't us. Mm -hmm. So we can do what we want. Y'all can sit back and think how long you're going to wait and let them other guys sit back. But the big ball away, we move when we move. We ain't got nobody to say, you know what? We doing better than any college player right now. Why? Because Jello's getting paid ten times what any college player is getting right now. They don't get nothing. They don't get nothing. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we good, baby. The now, coach said that he was surprised. Now, I don't know how this works. Do you tell the coach before you make the Oh, he was very surprised. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the university was surprised. They ain't told me nothing, so I ain't telling them nothing. Mm. <laughs> now they surprised. Right. They didn't tell me one boy playing if he not playing or whatever. And then as soon as we up and gone, oh, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you didn't tell me nothing. 
So was it an indefinite suspension? Was there a time frame on you at UCLA? Like, what was it? They didn't give me a time. So I was really just sitting there. like Not sure. Back. Really? Yeah, I, when, there's, when I'll come back. So I was just waiting, really. Were yeah. you were you still eligible to play like other other at other colleges? So I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Because you didn't play a f- full game with UCLA, right? You could have played oh, yeah, another college no, yeah, if you wanted yeah, 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 to. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought you meant at, at UCLA. Why not transfer to another school? I just felt like I wanted to play like right away. My dad had the plan to go overseas, and I liked how that sounded. So now, when when y'all come to these decisions, is it a a, a discussion or is it a dictatorship? Does Lavar say no? This is what y'all going to do, or y'all? Talk. Oh, he talked to us. He don't, <laughs> like, talk to y'all or at y'all? Like, no, he don't, he don't, he don't, he don't like, you don't do talk to y'all. Nah. Like, he, know, he know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He don't make us do it, but he just... Everybody, everybody's up. stuck on this thing thinking, like, the VAR just control his boys. No, I give him guidance. Mm. But I mean by that, mm-hmm. you don't have to do nothing I say. But don't come back to me. If if I if I say, hey, let's go this way, this is the, the, the good things for going this way. Right. But if you decide to go left, I'm, I'm cool with that. But don't come crying back when things don't work out your way. And that's what people keep thinking uh, with all my boys. They're thinking like, oh, he need to let them be men and get from behind them. I ain't never been behind them. I'm on the side of them. We rolling together. But I will give them advice where I won't let people take advantage of them. They're too young to know all this. They're not experienced. They're teenagers. Mm-hmm. The, the, the thing that I love about your boys is they are young, but they do seem to listen to their father. Like, What makes y'all listen to your father in an era where a lot of kids don't want to hear nothing from their parents? He just always been there and helped us out and stuff. So, I mean, she'll still your dad or whatever, still your parents. So you can't just disrespect him like that. Mm-hmm. And they brought you in the world. So I mean, he's been right. He's been right pretty so far. Well, what about you, Lamelo? Cause I didn't see him have to check you a couple of times. Like, keep your head in the game. Now you ain't here with us this morning. Oh yeah, most of the time he's right. It ain't helped me a lot. So yeah. see, most of the time, when do you think? He, when do you think he's wrong? When's the last time he's been wrong? No. <laughs> uh, well, uh, actually, yesterday. Is it yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? He was playing one on one, and he thought he was going to win. <laughs> let your son beat you one on one? I ain't let that. I was trying hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was up. <laughs> we did old man and, 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 <laughs> and you couldn't even, like, we only get two dribbles. Oh, T. Yeah. Hey, but I know they remembered that game. I gave him a couple of little nice little elbows. Little elbows. Little elbows. <laughs> hey, thought they was my sons at one moment. Now, when the incident happened in China and, and Donald Trump allegedly helped, and then he came at you, how, how did you feel about him coming at you? And did you really send him some sneakers? I sent him some sneakers. 1600 Pennsylvania. Gave him three pair. Let him know how we rolled. Mm-hmm. Red, white, and blue. So we patriotic. They're going to mark that as a bomb as soon as they get there. They're going to be price in, man. But, but, but like I said, man, we, we had our guys with boots on the ground. I don't know what they was over there for originally, but he left with, with riding on our coattails. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to thank nobody I'm not in, in, in face-to-face with. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Ain't like he went over there and said, you know what? I'm over in uh, America. They got three Americans over there. Let me go over there and see what's up. It wasn't like he was over there like that. Mm-hmm. And it's just like you could have said, you ain't even never met my son. I'm supposed to say thank you. So <laughs> that's the way I looked at it. You think it was a publicity thing for oh, him? Oh, yeah, definitely it was publicity. publicity. Yeah. We had already, me and my guys had already had what, what had happened. They already had boots on the ground. It was moving already. And this before he even came over there. And this to come over there, and I'm supposed to thank somebody who says something on the other side, like, I told him to be lenient. Somebody could have told him that on the street. Right. Why do you think Donald Trump wanted an apology from you when Leangelo already I gave him one? He wanted an apology from me because I'm the big baller. Mm. That's why he said, watch, watch how I make this guy say thank you. Stop it. Now, what, what was going on in your mind when all that happened? Because we had a whole discussion about that up here and about the concern because, like, all oh, the laws are different. Anything could happen. Well, that's because you got to make it a story, make it sound good. Mm-hmm. But my son got enough character to get a pass somewhat because it's just a bad mistake that a young kid made. It wasn't like it was uh, like he twisted somebody's arm or went in there with a gun or something or cut somebody out. And took them. It was a small little thing, but people look at it like when I tell them it's not a big deal. Coming from L.A. South Central, I've had some of my friends be young, 16, 17 years old, go out shooting up folks and killing folks and the next day they're not there or they're going there for life. Just to get some little shades or something like that, man, and confess about it. I, I, I looked at it a little differently. Like, where I was like, man, I've seen a lot worse than what this is But stealing on. when he got the money, you got a Ferrari. Yeah. Leangelo. <laughs> a whole Ferrari. The whole got a half Ferrari. Why a pair of shades? What kind of shades were they? Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton? Louis Vuitton? I saw the statement you put out yesterday. You said you did it because your, your friends were doing it. That, that don't seem like the ball way to be a follower, man. I just made a bad decision. That's all. Mm-hmm. 
I ain't really say that too. However, you read that. That's I mean, uh, what was I the statement? My bad. What was the statement? I said we all stealing. Those niggas was in the shop. And we started <laughs> <taking stuff. laughs> I ain't say, oh, my friends did it. So oh, okay, stole. okay, okay. Right. It looked sweet, so he was like, all right, we out. But it never crossed your mind, like I got the money to buy these. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it just happened. That's all. Right. It could have been that maybe somebody with him did it, and he didn't even do. It. I mean, we don't know. But no, here's the thing. Oh, I did. I did. Like, Listen, I did. you're not covering for nobody. Who was saying, man? Mm. It was like, Lavar, how come you're not, you know, on your boy for doing that? I don't know why he did it. He don't know why he did it. <laughs> but it was done. And I ain't raised him like that. So, but I'm not gonna jump on him like that. Mm -hmm. he, you know, it's in his mind. He already did it, whether you locked up or not. It's up here for a while. So, you know, it's it's not where it's like, okay, everybody keeps saying, oh, you're in China. There's different punishment, man. No, is it? When you steal anywhere, you in trouble. Right. It's wrong. Were you disappointed in him at all when you first heard it? Because you knew what the media was going, especially well, due to you? I, to me, this is, this, is, this is how each one of my boys have done something stupid. Mm -hmm. But before the trip, Melo had done something dumb. Lonzo had done something <laughs> dumb. This was the only one who didn't do nothing. You knew it, it was just, coming. It was I knew it was turn. coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just so happens it, it happened over there. And I, I call it being lucky on the fact that we were over there. Right. And he wasn't by himself, you know, so... so it worked out pretty good, but I, come on, we all did some mistakes somewhere. I just stopped Absolutely. stealing. I used to always steal Double XL and Source magazines. Like I'm talking about three, four years ago. Walking, I don't know why. You still were stealing three, four years ago. <laughs> I don't ago? know why. Yeah, I'm gonna just be there. I just walk out with it. I ain't mean to. I was standing caught you for that. Now I stole that. I ain't mean to. I'm pretty sure everybody in this room has stolen something at some point. Yeah. Uh. Now, with your confidence, I'm going to call it confidence. I ain't going to call it cockiness. Do you feel like your sons all have a target when they play basketball? Like, they want to prove that they can shut them down to kind of shut they you up? They better have a target mm -hmm. from day one. Man, uh, even when they was young, like in the third grade, we playing eighth graders, ninth graders. And the name of our team was called the Big Ballers. And, you know, it's a lot in the name. Mm -hmm. It's called Supremacy or that one. And then people want to come at you. So I'm like, yeah, we the Big Ballers. And everybody would come in there jokingly. The Big Ballers, why are they so small? <laughs> when we finish beating that tail, they come out and say, oh, they the real big ballers. Mm -hmm. So they've been like that all their life. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't want that target on your back, be sorry as hell. Nobody don't care. Now, you think they rate your son a little too fast? Because your son is a rookie, but he's playing phenomenal ball as a rookie. But yeah. people, I think, want him to, 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 to be, you know, the best he could be as a rookie. How well, do you feel about you that? Because they, they, they pick at everything that he does. He is the best. That's why they got to pick at him. But you know what? How I raised the boys, man. I said, man, them ratings don't mean nothing. Let them say whatever they want. We're not about the ratings. We're about them wins. So when it's all said and done, we're going to see who laughing last. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why everybody got to have a story. So you got to got to nitpick on all this stuff. But it's never been about Zoe shoot. It's always about him getting W's. Mm -hmm. And that's why I come to tell him, say, you let him do his thing. Them W's going to come. Because once you create a monster, you got to feed him. I feed my boy them W's. Kobe Bryant says he need to get better now. He do. Or, <laughs> who don't want to get better now? What, you going to wait 10 years, five years go by, talking about you only a rookie? And that's why they kind of try to flip my words, and that's good because this is entertainment. I say they coaching them soft. What I mean by soft is when you, when you tell a kid, oh, it's the hardest position, he'll figure it out, it's okay, we're just behind him. I don't want to hear that. I'm going to go out there and do your job. But you got to let him do his job. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you feel like they letting him do his job or not yet? Hey, not yet. But they 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 learning, mm -hmm. they learning, and that's when I told them, I, they don't know how to coach my boy. They just got him, so they don't know the things to say to him to make him go. Feels like you want to be a coach a little bit. Would don't you, have to be a coach. Would my you boy want to be on coach? autopilot? Would you want to be a coach? If I wanted to be a coach, I'd be one. Mm. You don't. You, you've never been soft on your boy. He never been soft on y'all. No, not at all. Feel like when y'all would fall as a kid, what he would do? Get up, you a boy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you see, you right there. You right there. Yeah, never soft. Even when we were super young, it's always been hard, coach. Mm -hmm. You've spoken a lot of things of, in your life into existence. Like, you knew you were going to have three boys. Yes. Right? You knew um, the, they're all going to go to the Lakers. Yes. You knew when you met your wife. Yes. That y'all were going to be together. <laughs> Man, I must be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I must be good. But uh, you know what? I tell everybody, uh, you know, our famous big baller way, are you built for this? And I figure anybody can have anything they want if they're willing to put the time in. Because sometimes... Let, let, let's say you want something, and it takes you about a week to get it. Are you going to wait that week? Or maybe it may take you 10 years to get it. Are you going to wait 10 years? It's if you really want it, 
you're going to get it. Like I was telling this guy one day, I said, man, you know you can get any woman you want <laughs> if you just got a woman to put the time in. You might love, love this lady and she get married. Okay, you might have to wait till she a widow before you come back at her. It might be 40, 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> but are you willing to wait? If you're not, you know about your thing, find a new one. You I think like anybody, that. You know, I like that, especially you know in this era. Take your time. Don't right. take it, young man. Gonna, but, but you, you think anybody could be a pro NBA though. player? I think anybody could be a pro. Uh, but, but you gotta, if you really want to be a pro, there's a lot of things you gotta do, but I don't think people be really, they want the money, mm -hmm. but it might not be their passion to be in it. Like I told my boys from day one, you born to go pro. Your last name Ball, everything lined up for you. I can see that. I thought that when I first saw y'all last name, I was like, it seemed like it's some destiny going on. <laughs> it here. is, man, if you make it like that, though. Because your wife played ball too, right? Yes. I told them we're original ball family. We're the first basketball family. Yeah, yeah, Anybody yeah. playing soccer or baseball, we got three ball players, last name Ball. Who else is like that? How you get three sons, though, man? Because I got two girls, and I always say it's because Because you was a player back in the day. There them you days. go. I want to pass And, like, and right. Lord said, I'm going to give you these girls and see how you work I with know, these. man. But you were playing ball. You was like, I know you had to be getting it in. But you see, I'm strong, though, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an alpha dog, man. You got a little weak back over there, something, man. <laughs> you, alpha dog, You kept baby. your socks on or something? Hey, man. <laughs> I was going to have boys. But boys running our family. That's why I told my, my mm -hmm. wife. I said, I know you can't have like 12 kids, but you'll get three boys. Right. And you're also instilling in your sons just the how great it is to be in a monogamous relationship, which uh -huh. I think people don't stress enough. Seeing you and your wife, and then Lonzo has his girlfriend that's actually right. involved in the business now, too. She's launching the Big Baller brand for women. Right. So I think that's great. Like, it seems like it's a, a great example to set for people in general in the right. world. Well, that's that's one of my brother's ideas, Alan. He, he's good at keeping everybody together. Because mm -hmm. even when we first started this business, man, we, we got, here, I'll tell you a story. We had some backpacks. And my wife was like, hey, I want to get these right here. They're different colors, but they was cheap. And I said, man, a big baller brand, we don't roll like that. And she was like, well, we just starting out, so let's just get a few of them with these colors. I was like, no, we're not getting those. So a little argument came up. You know, she said, well, I'm part of the business too. I said, yeah, but not this part. So anyway, <laughs> Alan comes back and he says, LeVar, I'm about to have this lady baller thing going on. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, now she can stay in her lane. And that's the same thing he kind of did with, with uh, Lonzo's girl. Because mm -hmm. you know what? If, if you dating a pro mm -hmm. and you idle and you just sitting there, all kind of stuff go through your head. Yeah, he cheating right. on now, me in every yes, city. And now, and now, that now, puts stress on him. He, it's stress on him because he doing all this stuff and you, you just sitting there waiting. And then when now when you get some free time, you're like, let's go to dinner, let's go do it. He's like, man, I'm tired. I don't want to go That's do real. that. Because you're not doing nothing. You're mm -hmm. just sitting there waiting on him the whole time and he not waiting the whole time. He got business to do. But now she involved with the business. That's kind of saving him. Mm. And, and and what happened was the fact that, you know, my wife is a little sick. Tina can't explain it to her like that. Like, if you want to still be with this camp, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Where Alan had to intervene was like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's get her with Tina and do, you know, pick some stuff. And took her out on the town to find some some products and stuff that we like. And she she feeling it now, so now she's working. Mm -hmm. Is that a distraction for you? I think I read that you, your wife had a, a stroke. Is that a, she had a stroke? It's not stroke. a distraction for me because I'm with her forever. Got you, got so, you, you know, got you. Like I told her, as long as she can smile and kiss her boys, we good. Can't right. say nothing. Now, do you go overseas to Lithuania or do you stay here? Because you, you, you at every Stop Laker it. game, you know, you know, I go on overseas. You going overseas? I gotta go see them Lithuanian people. And let them know we coming. Okay. <laughs> sure. And, and, and Melo, is there ever a time when you, when you want to tell your father tone it down? For me? Yeah. Oh no. Never. You scared or you just don't want to? No, it's just no point. <laughs> why? 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 No point. <laughs> why? He not going to listen? No. <laughs> what about you, Leangelo? You ever want to say, man, tone it down, Pop? No, I'm, I'm used to that. He's he been like that my whole life. So. Well, you guys know from a culture, man. Come on. Right, yeah. From from, from your father, when you, when you, you know, you way got black folks right. raised. Absolutely. You I ain't right. saying nothing even if I'm wrong. You right. And but they, they, they like the that with me, man. Yeah. yeah I don't, I, you know what? It's just to this day. I don't even tell my pops, like, you know, something he do and I don't like it. I go my other way because I can't. You know what? But when you're in a household, you got to listen and go by their rules until you're ready to change and do your own thing. Right. Even so, when people were giving you flack saying that you could beat Michael Jordan one-on-one -on -one and stuff like that, I'm like, I, I don't know too many black fathers that show weakness in front of their sons. You're not going to tell another your son that man can beat you. I one-on-one. -on -one. That's why they didn't have <laughs> the game one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. If it had been one-on-one, -on -one, he can't beat me. He's too slow and too weak. I'm talking about one on one. Now going up and down that court, man. One on one, I'm gonna bag you in. Ain't no three in the key. Two hundred seventy pounds going against two ten. No, 
not one on one, but he got that name. Oh, Michael Jordan got that name. It's just like when I talk about the game, man. People mm-hmm. look at me as, oh, that's that's uh, Lonzo's dad just talking. Man, I'm 50 years old. I know the game. It ain't that hard. It's basketball. Yeah. I tell you what, when now, I plant them seeds, they listen a little bit. Now, what about now though, if you enjoyed was to play one on one? Because you just said your son's. Your son's watched you yesterday. Man, who are you talking about? Jordan one on one. Right now, two dribble though. Jordan one on one. I care. He's fifty four. I'm fifty. <laughs> you don't let no fifty four year old man that smoke a cigar beat me. <laughs> no. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Now you guys enjoying doing the Facebook show? Is this the first like show they've done like this on Facebook? Because yeah. that was the first time I heard about Facebook having their yes, own yes. original. Yes. I mean, uh, going back to my brother, we, we had some 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 different TV shows that wanted us you know, TV brands or whatever. I'm and, sure. And uh, my brother was like, nah, we going with Facebook. I was like, but you know, like NBC and some other ones, let's get on TV. He was like, LeVar, ain't nobody watching TV no more. <laughs> let's go with Facebook. Mm-hmm. He said, they coming out with a new thing, let's go with it. And I was like, that Facebook ain't gonna work. He said, nah, but he got a vision for things too. That business acumen, that's what he do. So we went with Facebook and it was like one of the best things we did. So your brother is somebody that you consult with. That's it, man, yeah. Cause it seems like everybody, guy, the perception is LeVar don't listen yeah. to nobody but LeVar. Man, he's a director of the big baller brand, I'll let him direct. Got you. I'm CEO, he let me do my thing, but he always gives me great advice on, he never say yes or no about something, but he give me, okay, I think we should go this way, why? You don't have to, mm-hmm. it's just like this, man. He, was, he always said, hey, if you wanna jump off a building, I'm jumping with you. I'm gonna have a parachute, I'm gonna have two of them, mm. me and you. Coming from the hood, how hard is it to turn down the money that I'm sure is offered to you by sneaker companies, because like, um, it, it's not hard to turn down if you got a bigger vision. Got you. See, see, these guys will tell you, okay, we're gonna give you ten million, and don't tell you they made five hundred million off you. Mm. So now when they give you a fifty percent raise and give you fifty million, you be like, oh shoot, they done paid me. That's why they all get stuck at that endorsement deal at two hundred million. Oh, we're gonna give you twenty million to start. Five years go by, you do something. Now they say, you know what? We're going to give you $200 million. Not telling you, we made that in the first first year. We got right. I feel like this model is something that could would change the relationship between NBA players and sneaker companies forever. Because I feel like this could have been done. Oh, it's, it's going to be changed. Yeah, that's all we want to do is set that ripple effect, man. We out there. We just want to make you at least think about it instead of just running mm-hmm. in this same lane that everybody been in for the longest. Have you delivered on the shoes yet? Because I know Charlemagne, you, did you get your flip-flops? I checked on him this morning and said two more weeks. Two more weeks. I ordered some big weeks, ball of flats. Them, man. We, we got them all out there. <laughs> we, we start pushing out stuff on November 24th. Okay. So you're you going to get those, man. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the hardest things, I think, for people is having the right team around them, too. So what's Most good for definitely. you? Yeah, so I think for a lot of other players, they might not have had the right people to guide them because, right. you know, that's not easy, and at least everybody here could trust each other. That's that's true. Everybody here can trust each other, man, on the fact that we all family and we all don't have no hidden agendas. Because mm-hmm. what happens is sometimes when this money gets in effect, you know, mm-hmm. everybody else like, how can I get a little more? Or they start looking at the other person's pocket like, but I'm doing this, why I ain't getting this? But if if, if everybody is is on the same level and we all trying to build this empire as big as possible, right? So it's n- it's not the money thing that we're thinking about. Why is it hard to get our Why is it so hard to get our own people? to believe in us when it comes to stuff like that? Well, it's hard to get our own people because the way we brought up, man, we the alpha dogs, man. Mm-hmm. You go to the hood, you picking the best dude out there, he's he thinking about himself. As opposed to saying, you know what, as, as a group, we could really do something. It's just like my dad, we had, we had um, five boys in my family and two girls. Mm-hmm. He could have made us a basketball team, but he didn't have the vision that I had. Mm-hmm. So I did it with my three boys and he looking like, Dang, I could have, because he always made us stronger and faster than everybody. Mm-hmm. He just wasn't behind it like that. And you know, and it gets kind of sad sometimes, man, but mm-hmm. I tell him, I say, Pops, check it out. If you didn't treat us or do us the way we were in this road, I wouldn't be here with them. True. You do, you, do, you, do you respect people who come to you behind the scenes and be like, hey, man, I, I like what you're doing, you know what I'm right. saying? But, but don't say but it tone it loud. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you know what? Um, it's cool when they say that, man. Some of them mean it, some of them don't. But I, I get it, as long as I'm true with my guys right here, I'm good. If you come up and say that, because I've had guys, you know, talk crazy and then come up behind me and be like, man, I love what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I get it, because you've got to answer to somebody, so you better keep it on. on you got to answer right. to your master. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So they can't really, you know, but I, but I get it sometimes, man. But I, me, on the other hand, I don't roll like that. Now, are your kids allowed to wear other sneakers, other brands? I know during the summer league, 
we seen uh, Lonzo wear different sneakers. He wore Kobe one day, he wore Jordan one day. Are they allowed to? Or are they? That's, hey, hey, that's that big baller brand. Mm -hmm. That's that independence. You can do what you want. You can mm -hmm. wear what you. I bet you got a closet. You don't just have one shoe in there. Correct. Unless. <laughs> You Somebody, you, you endorse her, and they say, you better not wear that other shoe. If I catch you outside, you're losing everything. I'm going to cut like, your foot off. You know? <laughs> and, and it's just like, you know how they get some of these guys. They show up to their house with a truckload of shoes. You mm -hmm. can't even wear all them shoes. But we taught, like, oh, man, they gave me a, I'm going to tell your boys, they showed up to my house with a diesel full of shoes. I got them all. Mm -hmm. Tell them, take them back and give me the money for them. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to do that. Say, fill the diesel up with money. Mm -hmm. They won't do that, but they figure you can get a lot of guys when you when you get endorsements and you don't have nothing and you needy. Mm. See, we not needy. That's what's killing them. Now, now you, Angela, did, did it hurt to have to apologize to Trump? <laughs> he won't let me talk. Mm, they wanted to hear that, and he tweeted about it before my speech, so I had to add him in there like right before I gave it. Who made y'all? The school made y'all do that? I wrote my like my original speech, and then. When I had to put his part in there in the morning, like right before I went. <laughs> your, before. your daddy was like, nah, man, don't apologize. Oh, I ain't talked no, to him no, before that. Like, <laughs> what, what you would have told him? Like, you told him don't do it? No, I'm gonna let, you know what? Jello gonna make his own decision on if he should do it or not. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and being politically correct at that time, he, he, he's like, it's not a big deal to do that. Mm -hmm. Is that why you did it though, because he tweeted about it? Actually, my school wanted to hear it too. Got right? you. Because like, before I went up there, it was like, well, you, you gotta thank him for all this. You were happy I to be home. I just come in there real quick, like before my speech, before I gave my speech. If you knew you was going, well, you didn't know, but if you knew you was going to Lithuania and wouldn't be at UCLA, would you have thanked him? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, they if they didn't want me to do it, I mean, like, if they didn't tell me to do it, he wouldn't have been in there. Wow. To be honest. Now, are people coming to you to try to, like, consult for them, seeing what you've done with your own family? Do you have other ballers, like, hey, you know, I would love to be part of the the team? Or well, a camp have you academy, right? We, we, we got some folks that, that, that want to be with the big baller brand, but I've, I told them no on the fact that I don't want to be 80% uh, in with my boys and 20% in with them mm -hmm. on the fact that it's not, I'm not giving them the full 100. Once once I get my boys where they're at, right. then, I, then I'll put 100% into somebody else or... Or just leave it alone. I don't want to give you a half-ass thing, you know. I don't want to be like, well, I'm working with my boys, but yeah, yeah, come on, slide in. Mm -hmm. I want to be 100 in. If I'm with you, I'm making sure they're taken care of first. Are the conversations with sneaker companies changing? Are they coming through, like, wanting to partner instead of doing endorsements yet? Or? Oh, man, you know, they, they seeing the movement. Mm -hmm. They seeing the movement. Uh, they laughed when me and my brother told them, say, hey, man, let's, let's co-brand with this. You know, let's, let's work together. Because uh, if you guys don't, you know, get with us, we're going to become your competitors. Mm -hmm. And then we got intelligent on them saying, no, nah, we ain't going to come at you and talk about we better than you. No, nah, we're going to start digging in your market shares because if they ain't buying your stuff, guess what? They're over here getting ours. Mm. So now they're looking at it differently. But it's going to hit them. It's going to hit them real hard. Now with parents, a lot of parents who watch the show, and they say, well, how can I get my kid trained to, to make a high school team? Well, let's not even talk NBA. Mm -hmm. How do you train your kids and, and how do you keep them, you know, Thinking basketball and, and well, what people got to understand is uh, my boys didn't get good all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. They've been good since since babies. Mm -hmm. And when you put that time into any of your kids, whatever they do, you got to find a, what they have a passion for. And if you can get behind them and help them, as far as don't make it like a, a chore and make it fun to them, mm -hmm. just like us playing basketball, mm -hmm. man. And me, you know, my boys been competitive since they've been like two years old. I used to have them hanging on the bar, see who can hang the longest. Who can jump off a stair and land on their feet? And yeah, yeah. Fall. So everything was like, oh, damn, one more time. So I'm spending a lot of time with them with these games mm -hmm. and playing. And it's a family thing. So like, like I was telling them, man, you can't get like these boys on the fact that people got to understand this. My wife is uh, is a basketball player. Mm -hmm. So you in the gym every Saturday. It wasn't like, oh man, another year of this. I got to spend some time with my girls or something. She got that passion too, and it's like a, like a family thing. So right. every time we went out as a family, it's fun. Mm -hmm. We go out and you know you work all week, Monday through Friday, get your skills up and see how you perform on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then we go out to dinner and talk about it. And a lot of talks be good because we always win it. When we lose, hey, I make them feel bad. Like yeah, this ain't what you want to do. And but Tina, being a woman that she is, and she's also a mother, one of the things I got to commend her on, she never. Kids are seven years older than y'all. Y'all, y'all, you did good. You okay? She never babied them. Mm. She rolled with me. It was like, man, you got to work on your game, get your step up. So when you got people the same, 
it's 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 a lot better. And usually when you have two parents, mm -hmm. it even turns out better. Now who, who's better at playing one on one? I'm sure you played your wife before. What? How many Killed times her. did she beat? You? What? <laughs> Murder. Oh my God. Right, come on. Now. I ain't taking one on one. Never lost. Leandro, have you, you seen got that crazy. before? Crazy. She They're playing loving basketball in the backyard. <laughs> They're playing for each other's heart. I've never seen that. You never, never seen, that. seen it because he's in school. Nice. He better be in school. <laughs> yeah. Lamelo, did you ever want to do anything else other than basketball? No. no. Uh, him is did though. Oh, word. Right. What you wanted to do, Leandro? No, no. I mean, like I'm about the sport y'all play. Talk to me. I mean, I play football for fun, but I didn't want to do it over basketball. Mm. Like, like at the park, tackle. No, what's old? What's old? Want to do rap? We all well. Well, he used to play, like, base, still he used to play do. baseball, <laughs> football. It's like for fun. It's nothing to do over basketball. It, but is that because y'all y'all really love the game, or your father loves the game, and you don't want to disappoint him? No, we him? really loved it. Like we've been playing since we were little, and just developed a passion for it. So, mm -hmm. so it turned into. How many fights did you have to break up as a dad for being so competitive with these brothers None. fighting each other? None. 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 No fight. Like you that. know what? Only this is how I tell my boys, man. This is part of raising them. Right. I said, man. What you never do is is is, is fight your brother. Cause mm. when you know when stuff get hard, who you gonna run to? Mm. Your family. Why well, beat up the help? Mm. So that's why you have. Well, we was lucky enough to have different rooms. Mm -hmm. when you stand in one room, it's kind of hard. Right, right, right. But you know where we at? Everybody got their own room. You don't like what's going on? Go in your room. But never fight your brother. And I, like I said, if you don't take care of your brother, who will? Right. And even when you watch the show, you don't even feel like that tension or anything. Everybody's support, so supportive of each Man. other. Because they've been like that since they've been little. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a crazy story. Uh, and this is, people look at me, wow. Mm -hmm. I said, I asked my sons when they're young, when they're like two, three years old, four years old, actually. I said, you know what? If a guy comes with a van and he throws Mello or somebody in the van, what are you going to do? You know what my boys tell me? We're going to come get you. That's what they told me, that's off their head. Right. I said, no, son, how you gonna come get me? By the time you come get me, they off with your brother. Mm. They off with him. Don't come to me with two of y'all here and talking about the other ones back there. All three of y'all better jump in that van and be dead. All three of y'all. I don't want nobody coming back. <laughs> All three of yeah. That's now, what I tell them. Mm -hmm. So they know, yo, it's gonna be harder to try to tie up three kids than tie up one. Mm -hmm. But we all going down. Now, now, they always been like that. That's dope. That's dope. Do you think your wife trusts you so much with the boys? Number one, because she know you're a good man. But number two, you're, you're in an interracial relationship. Yes. So you can't. She she can't raise three black boys. Only a black man can teach her. Well, right. The black boys how to be and a I, man. I I, I, I I teach her how to raise them. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, you know, one of the things they want to do is sometimes moms are like, you know what, I'm gonna let your dad hit you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah, don't don't put me in it. You better learn how to handle them. Right. You know. Like I told them, but I also told the boys, and that's why people take this the wrong way too. I said, yo, if if you want to disrespect your mom, or you want to wake up and tell her, hey, I ain't saying nothing to you. But I said, yo, be like that the rest of your life. Don't wait till you get <laughs> sick and be like, hey, mom, can I do this? Can I do that? So think about it, mm -hmm. how you want to treat her. In every sense, they always respected her and did whatever she wanted. Cause I said, ain't gonna be no wishy-washy stuff. But I said, if y'all don't want to say nothing, I ain't gonna be mad. You ain't gonna do nothing to her if you don't want. You get tired of talking to press that that uh, that white press that might not understand oh, the dynamic of it's African okay. American household. It's okay. I let them do that. You know, they ain't, that's why they always ask me, Lavar, is your kid? I say no before they even get it out their mouth. I say I, don't, I ain't got no kids like that. You guys got them kids to be like, Mom, I don't think it should go on like that. I'm tired of this. Stop it. Leave me alone. What? <laughs> Better go out there on your own and you're gonna talk like that. Mm. You know? <laughs> you, you, you that bad? I've been training some kids where I am in, in, in Chino Hills. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm in an area where 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 the kids trainers these days, you know, hey, mom, dad, take me to the trainer. And they'll do a move and, and their dad or mom will be like, ah, oh, you almost had it. they'll be like, quiet. I'm trying to do this on my own. And then I have to kind of intervene, like, well, you in the big ballers pit. If your mom and them is bringing you. They're allowed to watch you train and say some things. I ain't saying messing with me when I'm trying to tell you how to do it. Right. But they behind y'all. They be like, oh, like they ain't never been chastised like that. Like, mm -hmm. dude, you out of line. Mm -hmm. You ain't paying for this. Mm -hmm. They brought you over here. It's eight o'clock at night. They could be doing something else. Mm -hmm. So I kind of make some of the some of the kids that I train understand. And they're a little out there that when they think they can just tell their mom and dad things. Right. Well, I got a question for all three. I want to start with Lovato. Hypothetically speaking, what if the master plan to get all the boys in the NBA doesn't happen? Would you feel like you failed? No. No. How could I fail? Walking around here like a millionaire. 
it's something I built from the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's why they even talking about, you know, Alonzo struggling. I said, how? 20-year-old millionaire playing a game that he loves? What, where the struggle at? But you know it's not about the money, though. It, it ain't about the money. Mm -hmm. That's what these people don't understand. Mm -hmm. The key to life, I don't think it's making all the money in the world. Because once you done bought everything you want, what's left? Right. You better have a passion for something. And, and the thing that I like is my boys love to play basketball. And, and it just so happens that's their livelihood. So they winning. You see what I'm saying? It's just like you guys sitting here, man. Mm -hmm. You probably used to shoot the breeze on the block, man. Now you guys are getting paid. Oh yeah, to I ain't go to college. Here. Exactly. I got crack charges. And you and you, and you having a, and you having a nice time <laughs> coming in here every day, Absolutely. whatever, and just talking to people and meeting folks. But you was doing that for free back in the day mm -hmm. on the hood. You're like, man, I ain't gonna touch something, man. He, he gonna let you know what's going on, mm -hmm. all you guys, man. But if this is your passion and you, this is not like work to y'all. It's not like work at all. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So y'all won. Absolutely. So, so Melo and Leangelo, would y'all feel like y'all failed if y'all didn't make it to the NBA? No, I don't feel like I failed. It's just, I mean, like you said, we just love to play, really. So it's not pressure playing or nothing. You just go out there and do what you love to do. And then wherever that takes you, that's where you're going to end up. So about you, Mello? Yeah, same thing he said. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sure, that, I'm sure that the ladies love you guys, too. So what, what do you guys learn about dealing with the ladies? It's a lot of ugly women in Lithuania, from what I heard too. Shut, Shut up, up, man. <laughs> <laughs> but what, like, what, it, what do you learn at home about oh, relationships? Yeah, and dealing with the women that are, or well, ladies, girls that are coming at you. No, nothing. Just do what he do. <laughs> oh, your daddy, Leandro. You can't do what he does. The <laughs> <laughs> can't do Not what yet. he do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate. So, you what does guys that mean? Too, Just man. monogamous. Uh, as far as do what your dad does. Like treat women how he does. Okay. But y'all seen a healthy a healthy relationship <laughs> with your mom and father all these years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and Levi, I got to ask you, are you going to um, cut back on the sweets? No. Because it's an OD. Man, them, them sweets are good. You ain't playing no ball, you exactly. good. Exactly. Yeah. Even if I'm still, playing ball, I'm still getting them sweets. Sugar's like an addiction, because I know I eat a lot of sweets, too. Yes. And sometimes I feel terrible after. Like, why did I do I that? I don't feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last question. What's the plan B in case basketball doesn't work? <laughs> he told you about plan well, B. No, no, no. He didn't say what the plan B was. He just said he wouldn't be disappointed. Well, yeah, but what is the plan, plan B? B ain't no plan B. There you go. Ain't no plan B, because I always thought of this with plan Bs. If you 80% in plan A and you 20% in plan B, you ain't 100 in. Mm -hmm. So don't be mad when you don't make it because you worry about a fallback plan. Like I tell my boys, man, we'll fall back when we fall back. But here's the thing. People keep talking you know, about the educational thing. Oh, they took them out of school. They're not going to be educated wrong. You can take your boys out of school when you got a brand. When you got a brand, you can do what you want. All right. And that's us. So we can leave anytime we want. The boys are going to be fine. So no plan B. Ain't no plan B. Y'all think about that when y'all in Lithuania having sex with some random women, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and you, all right, He's no, talking about plan B. No plan B. Ass, man. <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys for joining us. And hey, uh, man. you want to shout out Sneaker Pond, right? Yeah, oh, this... Sneaker Pond, man. They gave us the best over here on this East Coast, man. Mm -hmm. My boy Troy, right there off of 14th, man, that's Sneaker Pond. We had a great time, man. Okay. And he's a heck of a guy. And his son Chase is, is, is funny as hell. I love that guy. But what I like about them, too, is the independence, how they made their thing grow. Mm -hmm. now, out of a passion of just some sneakers. Oh, you got me saying sneakers now, man. I'm supposed to say tennis shoes. I'm from the East Coast. I got to say sneakers. When are the women's coming? When are the women's coming? Uh, man, we got that in line. We got, we got to get our I thing going on. I know the clothing's on. coming, but oh, yeah. are we getting the sneakers, it's, it's, it's too? It's coming. You getting the tennis shoes, too. Oh, I mean, you know. yeah, tennis shoes. Tennis shoes, shoes all this stuff. <laughs> we, we, getting it, we getting it right. You got to drop that woman line, Silk. You know they like to call you a misogynist. Man, they, they love to say that, but I'm married. I'm cool. So it's, they can say what they want. I don't understand. think not having a women's line makes you misogynistic. No, but they say that for other things, too. And, and some of the things, like, like I was telling the girl. But listen, if I never told her to stay in a lane, what happens when you don't stay in your lane? You get in a wreck. So that was a warning. Just, just be quiet and just stay in your lane. You good? It wasn't like, stay in your lane. You a woman. I don't want to talk to you. No, I just didn't want to talk to her. Well, you On the fact that she scares me, man. I, I watched Saw a lot of times. Now I watch it with a different view. On the fact <laughs> that she scared the hell out of me. She told me I scared her. I can't look at that lady more than once. 
I don't I don't think people realize how much of a trigger that was when you was talking to Christine Leahy because as a black man in America, right. we've seen historically so many times white women saying, "Are you threatening me?" Are you threatening? Like, hey, face forward. How you threaten somebody behind you? Yeah, <laughs> that's like walking down the street like I'm getting all y'all. Like, what? People got mad when I made the comparison to Emmett Till, but I'm like, no, that's the same yes. energy that yes. got Emmett Till killed. Yes, most definitely, man. And like I said, I appreciate you. I know you got your own thing, so you can say what you want. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't have that. That's why these guys be looking at us. You know, they'll come out there and do this this crazy talking on these ESPN shows like little puppets. Mm-hmm. And they trying to make things grow, just like, I, you know, going back to that dude Whitlock. You got to work for those guys. So that's why you talking like that. Because you don't have your own mind. Still right. get your ass up and do what they tell you to do. You you know don't don't act like you're a boss and you're doing stuff just like he was talking about. Oh, the balls are like the Kardashians. How? <laughs> he said they got a good product. It'll keep your eyes off of them. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Damn, yeah, good hey. product. Yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. That sounded crazy. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I just don't understand why people are so invested in seeing y'all lose. It makes no sense hey, to hey, me. Hey, I, I, I I don't get it. I don't see it. Either. You know what? They they got to. You know, but it, but it's cool. Loans. My boys know what I'm about. Mm-hmm. I know what they're about in our close knit grip group, and we just keep going forward. It's hard to stop us, man. So you gotta hate. You gotta hate on anybody that's successful, just like you guys, mm-hmm. man. It's the same way. But you guys have set a model where you, you got your own thing going, the way I'm looking at it, and you just do it with where well, you can go home and sleep at night. Mm-hmm. Right. The fact that you said what you said and you ain't regretting nothing. Else why you just leave it alone. Even when we started our show, they said it would never work. Right. Three people co hosting the morning show, they said that's never been done before. Yeah. Yeah. You know, three people, people equally hosting it. They said there's usually just, you know, the right, Steve right, Harvey right. show. Right, right, right. Yeah. But you seven, guys show seven them years later because you built for this, man. Absolutely. Most people, when it get difficult, they gone. Mm-hmm. So, man, I don't want to go through this part. <laughs> but, hey, we good, man. I appreciate you guys inviting us over appreciate here, man. Thank you all. Thank you for coming over here, man. We decided to come stop by here. Yeah, we appreciate you guys, man. Very much it. so. It's the Ball family. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 